Hello. Thank you for joining me. Beautiful, clear blue sky. And so I've got to take advantage and get outside whilst I can. I want to talk about a salutary tale of the best laid plans of mice and men and women uh, going horribly wrong. But we cope. Well, it's no choice. We have to cope. And this particular tale happened when my sons were early teenagers. And we'd been on holiday in Spain. The three of us headed back to the airport, having checked the, the lists, because we were able to use uh, my ex-husband's, he was still my husband then, uh, his staff travel. And they said, yep, plenty of seats. So we got to the airport at Malaga. We knew the uh, airline rep there, so that was fine. And he said, ooh, things have changed. They'd had a plane go tech. And so suddenly everything was full up. OK, see what we can do. So we lived in Lincolnshire at the time and we had flown out of Manchester. So he said, okay, there are two seats on a flight to Birmingham. I can get the boys on there. You keep all the baggage. I'll contact Birmingham and get them to keep an eye out for them, <coughs> excuse me, arriving at the other end. And you can follow on and pick them up. Thank you, that would be great. So I routed every penny of my um, sterling currency and gave it to the boys and said, now behave, do not leave the terminal building and do whatever the rep tells you to do there. Yeah, okay, fine. Off they went. The next plane was to Manchester, full. The next plane was to Birmingham, full. And then a plane to Gatwick showed up with, he said, the jump seat, i.e. the spare seat in the cockpit was empty. It was free. You can have that. Brilliant. Thank you. So, of course, all my luggage and the boys' luggage and the big bag containing all our purchases ready for a forthcoming party were loaded on and I arrived at Gatwick. I was at Gatwick, the boys were at Birmingham, the car was at Manchester Airport and we lived in Lincolnshire and by this time it was getting on. Anyway, I managed to find and get on a train to Birmingham with all of my three suitcases and a big hand baggage. Fortunately, I sat next to somebody who had a timetable with them and knew all about trains. So I explained my situation. Help! He said, right, okay. He said, you be standing at those doors ready for them to open and dash off. He said, because after this, there is only one more train going up to Manchester tonight. You will have to be quick. Being quick with three suitcases and a big bag took some doing. Fortunately, I eventually found a trolley and I could see the boys charging around down below me because the, the trains come in at a, an upper level. Dri driving around on the trolleys, having great time. I was frantically waving, but no, no. Anyway, got to them. And, oh, can we have something to eat? No, not got time. We've got to rush and get on this train. Oh, so we did. We made it literally as the train pulled into the station, piled on, 
got up to Manchester, found the car, which for me always takes some doing, <laughs> one of those big car parks, and then drove over to Lincolnshire. Of course, within the first five minutes, there was much snoring coming from two young men. But we made it home in one piece to find our cat sitting in the middle of the drive. The place that only he would go to when he knew we were due to arrive. How did he know? Did he know that we'd had those problems? Was he thinking, oh, I've got to be kind to them. I've got to show them that I love them. <laughs> it was a nice welcome home, but that is a journey that I will never forget. I think it aged me. Probably a good percentage of these gray hairs were down to that. <laughs> but it certainly got rid of any relaxation that had taken place during the holiday. <laughs> oh well, such is life. And if that's the worst thing that happened, then that's fine. I hope that you have better success with your travels. Take care and thank you for listening. It's always, always appreciated. Bye for now. Bye.